You are listening to the Disney Dream Girls, an unofficial Disney theme parks podcast. And this is show number 408 for May the 4th, 2022. Where dreams begin. Hello and welcome to this week's Disney Dream Girls. My name is Michelle Young and together with my jolly good chum Jane Phipps, we are your guides to the place where dreams begin. Well, at the Dream Girls, we like shaking things up a bit. And as many of you are also Star Wars fans, welcome to our very special May the 4th Star Wars themed podcast. Hello there, Jane. Hello there, Michelle. And we have a very, very special guest. Hello there, Len Tester. Hello, Michelle. Hello, Jane. How are you? I'm very well. Thank you very much for asking there, Len. And I'm very excited because we are here on May the 4th to speak with you about the Star Cruiser. So we're going to talk Star Wars on May the 4th. I am very excited. And this, I will just put out there, was a additional show for our Patreon supporters. But May the 4th demands a special show. So we're going to give this exclusive audio content to everybody. I'm super excited as well. We need to ask Star Cruiser. It looks from what I've seen of your content and heard of Mm -hmm. it. It was the most amazing time ever. Tell us everything. It was one of the best uh, Disney experiences I've I've ever had. It, um, It was two completely full days of playing in the Star Wars universe. It was exhausting, it was exhilarating, um, and I would totally do it again. It, the the amount of detail that they put into it and the flexibility you have in the gameplay um, is really great. Um, it's far more than I thought uh, Disney was going to achieve with it. The uh, the other thing I thought that was interesting was, like in preparing for it, you know, you have to you're encouraged to do a backstory. Um, the the thing that I was surprised at was how receptive the cast members were to a backstory that was funny <laughs> instead of being serious. Um, so my backstory was funny, uh, and I think the cast members appreciated that. And I think that's uh, I think that was part of the uh, the overall enjoyment. Share with everyone your backstory because it 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 had me in hysterics. <laughs> so my uh, my backstory was. Um, that I was a, uh, a an aging galactic film star named Hank Lonely, which is a play on Han Solo. Um, and 40 years ago, Hank starred, produced, directed, and wrote a nine-part science fiction epic called Space Robots in Outer Space. Um, and But through a series of coincidences, every single thing that happened in Hank's films also happened in the Star Wars universe, which just to remind everyone, the Star Wars universe is real life on the Star Cruiser, right? So, um, so everything that happened in Hank's movies happened in real life. Therefore, everyone thought that Hank's movies were documentaries, and we all know that no one goes to see documentaries. So, no one went to see Hank's films, and that's why nobody's ever heard of them before. <laughs> but I, uh, I had, but Hank doesn't know this, right? So Hank still thinks he's a galactic film star. So Hank brought with him on the Star Cruiser um, a set of 8x10 glossies, uh, which were made, <laughs> but in the exact same pose that Harrison Ford did for the promotional photos for Star Wars back in 1977. Oh, wow. Um, so I got a Han Solo outfit. Um, you're not allowed to bring guns uh, or anything that looks like a weapon on the Star Cruiser. So I had to use my fingers as like, like as I was pointing, which made it even cornier. <laughs> it was just cornier. The, um, the interesting thing for me though, was like, I wasn't sure how the cast members were gonna take it, but literally from the moment I checked in and told the first cast member what I was doing, everyone embraced it. In fact, the cast member that checked me in, I saw a few times later on um, during, the, uh, uh, during my cruise. And every time we would, even if we were just like walking past each other in the hallway, she would point to herself and go, I mean, I'm your number one fan, which is, <laughs> which is what she decided she was going to be as soon as we checked in. So, uh, yeah, so the, uh, it was really interesting to see how the, how the, how the gameplay went and, uh, uh, and to come up with a backstory. I've got to ask this. When you go back on the Star Cruiser, are you going to be Hank again or are you going to come up with another character? No, Hank is a uh, Hank is pretty close to canon on the uh, Star Cruiser. So I've had a few friends that have gone uh, in the month since I went, and every time they go, I ask them to do the same thing, and that is to ask the cruise director because there's a cruise director role 
on the Star Cruiser. Um, but ask the, ask, ask the cruise director if they're going to be showing uh, Hank Lonely's nine-part science fiction epic space robots in outer space. And so I think by this time, the uh, uh, cruise director is tired of hearing that question. <laughs> but still. <laughs> What's the feedback been from that then? Have they actually embraced it even when you're not there? Yes. So I had some friends oh, wow. who um, who went a week later. Um, and I had the only thing I did was uh, so that my, my, I told my friends that, you know, humor is the way to go. So they decided they were going to be um, used land speeder salesmen. <laughs> And so they came up with a website. Are you familiar with the website cars.com? <laughs> right. So they they're, they're, so they did landspeeders.com, basically a parody of cars.com, <laughs> where um, they had listings for every kind of used land speeder every, ever seen in the Star Wars universe. And then for fun, they threw in a 1984 Toyota Tercel. As, as an example of like another another strange piece of alien technology, um, and uh, so I had tweeted out, "Hey, you know, my um, if you're going on the Star Cruiser, I look up for my friends Jeremy and Justin, who are going as used land speeder salesmen. Here's their website." Um, and when they checked in, um, they the Disney folks that were checking them in, so the cast members who were checking them in, said, "Oh, you're you must be friends of Hank Lonely. We heard you were coming," uh, <laughs> and. And so, yeah, so I think they remembered, yeah. Oh, that's so cool. Yeah. One of our listeners has sent us a question to say, can you ask, Len, if there's any chance space robots in outer space will be released in a 4K limited edition box set? <laughs> and also, will there be any chance of these classic films getting any representation into any theme park soon? <laughs> you were working on, the, uh, working on the attraction rights, right? <laughs> ask, ask for the director's cut. Yeah. Oh, that's funny. Bless David. We should make DVD covers. Yes. Oh. Okay. <laughs> yeah, forget right. the glossy pictures. This time, give out your DVDs. DVD, DVD boxes. Yes, a box set. Oh, that's <laughs> genius. All right. We've got him on an idea now, Jim. We're, we're going to say it. It's going to happen, isn't it? I can just tell. Oh, that's fantastic. And, they, and when it did have a uh, another guest who went in as my um, long-lost son, Ben... So he was Ben Lonely. <laughs> it's a thing. I know. It's very funny. Oh, this is just going to run and run and run with people's creativity because, as you say, for someone like myself who's not a massive Super Star Wars fan, right. I would love to go down that route and just see the interactions that would bring. Whereas I think, Jane, you're a little bit more sort of straight edge Star Wars fan. Mm -hmm. Yeah, I suppose you could call it that. I mean, I, I probably know more than I actually realise that I know, having lived with, you know, or, or been involved with somebody who's been a Star Wars fan for over 30-something years. I think it's kind of rubbed off on me. I have no no choice but to embrace it. It's going to be interesting because I think from this may be a very British standpoint, I think with both you and I have said, Michelle, that idea of going in and doing this whole role play getting totally immersed is, is maybe not something that um although i do my cosplay for star wars don't get me wrong the whole idea of having a this immersive immersive experience is a bit um i'm a bit reticent on it i suppose is the best way to put it i'm a little bit cautious about it so it's really interesting hearing your take on it len and, and taking that doing like the prep work beforehand. I suppose it's a bit like going on a normal vacation, isn't it, Michelle? Mm. Normally we'd, we've got our spreadsheets out and we're doing our prep yeah. work to figure out what parks we're going to and what day and where we're going to eat and where we're going to go in the evening and which shows we're going to see. I suppose for the Star Cruiser, it's the same same sort of thing. But, yeah, get yourself hyped up beforehand by creating that that backstory. So I've never, I've never thought about it in that way. I think I've just looked at it and seeing how immersive it is and going, oh, I'm not sure it's for me. Maybe I've been swayed, I don't know. You you really do have to commit to uh, to being fully immersed. Like it's not it's not one of those vacations where you go and watch other people yeah. do things. It, I mean, you could do it, but why would you spend that that kind of money to do that? I had a, um, I talked to a family of four from Buffalo, New York um, uh, on the, at the end of the cruise, like literally the last day breakfast. And they had said that um, uh, they had done the Star Cruiser because they have been to all the parks, they've stayed in all the resorts, and they wanted to sort of check the box. 
that's you know to say that they've mm-hmm. done it um but they didn't uh, come up with backstories they didn't get involved in in any of the games and they didn't do any of the quests mm-hmm. um and i'm like well you really didn't do i mean you you stayed in the hotel yes but you didn't actually do the star cruiser if you didn't do that and mm-hmm. i don't I, I, you, I can't recommend anyone spends $5,000 on this just as a hotel. It just doesn't make any sense. No. Yeah. Well, I think, I mean, because both Simon and I do watch an awful and listen to a lot of podcasts and YouTube, et cetera, about the Galactic Star Quiz, and I know that in the Star Wars, the hardcore um, society out there, there was a little bit, well, more than a little bit of resistance about it because I think the idea was it the, the price point felt a little bit, too high and i don't think the as you've described what you actually do on this two days i don't think has maybe come across as well as it could have done in some of the promotional stuff i think the bits that were released set a lot of hardcore star wars fans a little bit on the back foot and have been very defensive and not wanted to embrace it because what they perceived it to be has been an overpriced hotel with a few bits added on does it, that make sense? I, uh, that was my impression as well. Um, so originally, when I was when I was going into the experience, my I was skeptical that anything was going to be worth five thousand dollars for two days. Mm. Um, and so my my original intent was to test the limits of the gameplay, like how much right. improvisation could actually happen. Um, and so my original idea was to try and stage a mutiny <laughs> on the Star Cruiser. Um, and I had actually had people lined up to help. Um, with it, it turns out that um, as as the date got closer, and you know, and and I was speaking with um, not only people who were play testing um, the Star Cruiser well before it opened, but also also with some of the Imagineers that worked on it. And so, in the last couple of weeks before I went on, I realized it it wasn't going to be possible to mutiny. Like the 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 setup didn't lend itself to that level of um, uh, autonomy. Mm. Um, but what you what you could do was um, was throw things at the uh, the actors you know who are playing uh, that allowed them to stay in the story but just see how they would react. So so here's an example. Um, on day two, you go to Disney's Hollywood Studios into Black Spire Outpost, you know, into Batu, and you have to um, ride both of the rides, Rise of the Resistance and um, William Falcon Smuggler's Run. And then you also have to do a bunch of side quests. And doing all of this um, unlocks other things for you to do when you get back on the ship. So it's mm. very important that you do it. Um, of the six hours that I spent in the studios that morning and afternoon, I probably spent a good four hours just playing the um, Star Cruiser games and you know riding the rides and stuff. But I did have a little bit of extra time. So I decided to, um, to go meet Mickey and Minnie at Red Carpet Dreams in, in Hollywood Studios. So I, I took a picture of myself with Mickey in his sorcerer's outfit, and I took a picture of me and Minnie in her princess outfit, and then I brought them back on the Star Cruiser. And I, uh, and when I was interacting with the captain of the ship later that evening, I said, "Hey, you know, I, you know, I joined the Resistance because um, I, mean, I went on the Rise of the Resistance ride. I joined the Resistance, but we, um, you know, some things happened. It was crazy. We crash landed in Black Spire Outpost, and I ended up in a daze." wandering the remote villages beyond black spire outpost <laughs> and i met this village of rodents <laughs> um and and you know we we didn't speak the same language um but um but i feel like we got along um would you say that this is the um you know i, I think i met the village chieftain so i showed a picture of mickey in his sorcerer's robe i'm like well clearly this this headdress that he's wearing is some sort of ceremonial thing indicating that He's the most important person in this village. And just for a brief second, you could see the captain's face like, okay, they didn't train me for this. <laughs> What's going on and how do I respond? And then she came back and was like, oh, yes, clearly the uh, this is this is some sort of uh, uh, ceremonial garb that they're wearing. And uh, clearly it's got some traditional value and, you know, and stuff like that. So we riffed on that. But, um, you know, it, it was fun to just throw things at them and, 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 and see how they responded. And that was fun. You see, I don't think I could do that. I think I feel cruel doing that. Maybe it, that's it a was, Britishness in me coming out, though. It was, you know, did, uh, I also did a dance for the Stormtroopers. Have you heard this? Oh, we've seen the dance. <laughs> yeah, so I did the dance for the Stormtroopers. <laughs> yeah. Um, and so I, for each of the characters, I knew who the characters were. I had um, a few lines of improv myself or a few prompts 
that I could um, use with them, depending on which way the conversation was going. And for the stormtroopers, I did not only a dance, but also a song that I didn't get to use, which I will do next time. Um, yeah. Anyway, so it was, it was a lot of fun. It was. Uh, it was. I think they enjoyed it. Uh, I think I enjoyed it. Or I, mean, I definitely enjoyed it. Um, but it was. It was. It was a great experience. It was exhausting. Um, we played on day one. You know, we checked in at one p.m. We did not stop playing until 11 p.m. And then I got up early the next day, you know, had breakfast and spent all the time in Batu. came back. And I don't think we finished day two until midnight. And then day three, you, you know, you wake up, eat breakfast and leave. It was, I took me, I checked out on a Thursday. I probably didn't recover until Sunday afternoon. You it's need a vacation that, to get over it. Yeah, it was exhausting. Yeah. And I, I'm an introvert anyway. So, you know, uh, interacting with that many people, um, you know, for two solid days is a lot. Mm. I would totally do it again. Though. I'm doing it again next March. So, um, yeah. So I, I think it'll be it'll it'll be a hoot. I'm seeing <laughs> buttons being given out, DVDs being given out. <laughs> you really need to up your merch game. Clearly. Oh, that reminds me. If you look at the um, if you look at the Star Cruiser availability, here's something interesting um, for your for your listeners. Um, if you look at Star Cruiser availability, um, the only two dates in the last three months of the year that are not available are the Monday and Tuesday after U.S. Thanksgiving, which I believe is the 28th and 29th of November. I'm going to check now. Uh, 20th and 29th of November. There's only two dates right now that are sold out. And it's weird because no other dates around those are sold out, but it's also not the week of U.S. Thanksgiving, and there's no legal holiday that weekend. So my theory, this is just a theory, um, is that Tron will open in the Magic Kingdom on December 1st, and the 28th and the 29th of November are being held back for... Uh, media events at the Star Cruiser. Ooh, that's a very just, good theory. Just, just a theory. We'll see. Oh. Right. Start taking bets now, then, Michelle. Yep. Well, do you know what? I wish it was going to open in August because I'm out in Florida in <laughs> August, and that would just literally make my trip. <laughs> that might be a little early. I don't. I don't know that they've. Um, I mean, they haven't. They haven't even started day one of testing. Yeah, let's be honest. It's not. It's not hit its eighth year in, of construction yet, sir. So. Yeah, yeah, no. yeah, yeah it's exactly. Yeah, we're only we're only in year six. Come on, Michelle. <laughs> Obviously, it'll be a little bit impatient here now because if it was universal, it'd be built already and in its oh, yeah. third year of ride failures. <laughs> <laughs> that was great. Thank you ever so much for answering all of our questions on air. We really do appreciate it. I will, uh, as always, recommend people to listen in to the Disney Dish as well to uh, ha- brighten up your Mondays because it's, oh. <laughs> it's a little bit of cheer on my way to work. So thank you ever so much for doing that. I appreciate it. Thank you, Michelle. Right, lovelies. Thank you ever so much, Len, for joining us this week. Thank you to everybody else. Until next week, it's a goodbye from me. Goodbye from me. And goodbye from me.